Welcome back to the channel, everybody. More big things are happening. Crypto hasn't even been unleashed yet. You want to be real about it. All the top people are saying the same thing from the DLT systems to the to the uh, legacy financial system. It will be unleashed when you see all that clarity, all that regulation unleashed across the board. And then the legacy system can step in and flood it with capital that will raise that bottom up significantly. That's my humble opinion, but I think that's pretty much consensus. That's where the big money comes from. You see, that's where everybody's running to the legacy financial system. That's where the flood of capital comes from. Right. But wait. We have an article right here. This could be significant in the future and it's titled Hong Kong firm mulls tokenizing three tons, three tons of gold. It says a uh, three ton gold vault amid local ETF boom. If that's where they're thinking about beginning at three tons, could you imagine where it all ends? I'm telling you now, gold is going to be significant. The, the mass, because I know some people are going to say we have some tokenized gold now. Tiny little bit. I'm talking about the mass tokenization of gold. Never, ever forget how significant gold is. Um. More people around the world trust gold as a store of value than anything else, especially the big money trust gold long term and are much less apt to play with gold. I had an article here somewhere we're going to cover a little bit later that's about gold and is literally titled title. Literally, this is how serious people take gold. It's literally titled Peter Schiff says there's no ceiling on the price of gold. Wait, 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 wait. That's not the important part. I'm going to actually read you this title. We'll get to the gold news later. But I want to show you how significant this is. This is his quote. It says, quote, I did put my bar mitzvah money into gold, unquote. Peter Schiff says, listen, <laughs> you understand how how significant that is. It shows you that they take gold extremely serious. But so now let's go ahead go back to this article. OK, I'm going to show you connection here. Let's scroll down. It says value partners, a Hong Kong listed company is set on issuing blockchain blockchain tokens backed by physical gold and filing applications for crypto related ETFs. Now, both of those are very significant and powerful, but it shows you how close we are to that next step for crypto into the big boy leagues into the big player leagues where that big money is so far all the meme coin stuff and the little retail uh, you know based bull runs that's cool that's fun that brings some nice gains but let's not kid ourselves that big money you're talking about the trillions flooding in and people, if they're positioned correctly, not financial advice, positioned correctly in certain assets, making generational wealth. That's the next step. That's that next level. Let's read this little tidbit here. It says, according to local media, Hong Kong Commercial Daily, the firm plans to tokenize is three tons of gold bars worth an estimated two hundred and one million dollars at current prices. Remember, that's just where they would begin. And if they're thinking this way, they're not the only ones. There's been a lot going on over there in Hong Kong. There's a lot going on around the world right now. If this is where it begins, where does it end? That's a heck of a beginning. If you ask me, that's a whole lot of trust. If you ask me, this is value partners already offers the, the only Hong Kong gold ETF backed by physical gold and believes digitizing its previous its precious metal with blockchain technology will only improve accessibility for investors. Now, wait, who has great relationships in Hong Kong right now? Well, let's say one of a few. Let's go here. You don't remember this? I know you do. You knew where you probably knew where I was going before I even got here. It says, oh, this is a little, this is a little article. At least, at least some people think it's little. Ripple joins Hong Kong CBDC pilot partners with Fubon Bank. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let's not play around. The best thing that Ripple has is XRP. Wait a minute. The only thing that separates Ripple from just being eh, just another run of the mill company is XRP. 
<laughs> right? So let's not play games. They may begin in one place, but the plan is always to end in another. They begin small, they plan to end big. No matter how they begin, the end game for Ripple in any company using the XRPL has to be XRP. What did XRPL.org say? What did they say about payment channels? You saw, I've showed this so many times. You, you, you guys, if you don't know, uh, what is it? Is it? I think it's XRPL.org where they talk about payment channels. The best thing on the XRPL is XRP. The fastest, the cheapest, on-demand liquidity. People haven't seen anything yet because it hasn't been unleashed. It's time will come, in my humble opinion. It's coming fast, as a matter of fact. But yes, Ripple has great relationships in Hong Kong. So even if they didn't take all of that, and I, I wouldn't say that they would take all of that. No, they don't need to. But I do believe that they could position themselves to take a good portion of that value over there. Ripple Labs has launched a new payment platform for central bank digital currency in Hong Kong. Yes, this is where they're beginning, right? Um, and I think this is also where they introduced that that retail. This is what I was saying to people before that retail aspect of their CBDC platform. The San Francisco based payment protocol and exchange network will partner with Fubon Bank, a Hong Kong unit of Taiwan's Fubon financial holding company as part of Hong Kong's new EHKD pilot program. Now, once again, they don't have to begin with XRP. Right. It's not time for that yet. That's what the whole flip of the switch idea is about. Um, they need everyone to be on board at the same time. That's the way it functions best. We read from some expert recently where they were saying how new uh, uh, financial systems or ecosystems are best. Uh, uh, and I think maybe it was it from a stellar related, related document or a stellar related video. They had brought some expert in to talk about these things and they were saying that it was best to start with a multitude of companies all at the same time running in that ecosystem. It's the only way that it functions uh, properly, right? And it functions best. So, uh, so that time, I think, logically would come later at a time where you have global regulations, like what the BIS has been calling for. And it makes a lot of sense, in my humble opinion, because Ripple, Stellar, Algorand, these are global companies. You can't have some people, well, I mean, I guess you could, have some people using it over here, but then not over there. No, what would be best? You could do it that way. But what will be best, especially if you know you're close to that clarity that you need, not just as a token, because XRP has clarity, but as companies building on that platform. First, you got to get past that SEC, SEC uh, speed bump. Right. Of course, they're standing in the way. But once you have that happening, then everybody starts at the same time. Boom. You get this high volume, high value. Then that there's those those lower fees that they want, that liquidity access that they want, all that stuff like that. But this could be something significant, in my humble opinion. So I'm keeping my eye on this. When I saw that first thing I thought was, oh, man, Ripple has some great relationships in Hong Kong. This could be something. Right. So now and then that's another thing. So Ripple multi, uh, over the last few years has been talking about the tokenization of everything. I think even David Schwartz was talking about that. That's huge. When you when you see something like this and you see how deep Ripple has gotten with Hong Kong in the last year, and now they're talking about the tokenization of everything, talking about three tons of gold to start. That's significant in my humble opinion. Hey, you let me know. I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm just here sharing what I found. So now let's move on here. Now we're going to get to a little bit, a little bit of, of XLM related news. It's always interesting when Danelle Dixon or someone from Stellar is doing interviews. It's like they say things, they say a little too much, I think, at times, right? That they don't mean to say. That's what I mean. That's what I'm trying to allude to. Listen to this. This video was titled Danelle Dixon at Meridian, Stellar's vision for the future of crypto. I'm going to tie a couple of th things together here because I have another little piece that adds something in after this little section, okay? Another video or transcript from a video. Let's start at one minute and eight seconds. You tell me what this sounds like. This is what she says. There's so there's just so many fun things. She's talking about dealing with 
these large financial institutions, as well as regulators. So many fun things. That doesn't sound like a company who's struggling. That doesn't sound like a company who's not bringing in big deals. That sounds like, and it doesn't sound like people who are resting on their laurels of what they already have done. Fun, so many fun things. That sounds like there's a lot of good things going on now, doesn't it? Let's keep, let's keep going. See, they're telling on themselves, but they're trying to do it in a way that that's not so obvious. But because they're excited, when you're excited about something, and you know you have you have a, a ace up your sleeve. It's hard to keep that in. It's a psychological thing, but let's keep going. Maybe I'm maybe I'm reaching. You let me know. I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm just sharing my thoughts. Then then she continues on. There's just so many fun things. Also, now pay attention to this. Also, we have regulators from all over the world. Wait a minute. Wait, let me continue. From all over the world that have come to talk. Regulators from all over the world are coming to talk to Stellar? Really? Why? Do you hear any any other companies talking like this? Wait a minute. But then I have to keep in mind, this is the same Stellar that a lot of people believe is so weak and so terrible, even though they haven't even been unleashed yet. And to each his own. You can have that opinion. Perfectly fine with me. But this is the same Stellar. Once again, that's dealing directly with the White House, World Economic Forum, United Nations. We can go on and on and on. So I have to keep that in mind. So according to Del Danelle Dixon, regulators from all over the world, why would they come to any blockchain that's not going to be completely unleashed? Why would they come talk to Stellar if Stellar wasn't a winner? Why would they come talk to Stellar if they weren't willing to work with Stellar? Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I think Stellar is, is, uh, is positioning itself. Let me phrase it that way. It's positioning itself to be massive. But that's just my opinion. Let's keep going. There's more. Because this gets more interesting here. It says, have regulators from all over the world have come to talk about different regulations. Oh, we already went through that. But here's the interesting part. Different regulations and different parts of what's happening. Oh, she gets real vague right there. What do you mean by that? She separated regulations. And this other thing she's talking about that's very vague because it says and regulations and different parts of what's happening. Now, wait. What's the other things that are happening that are major? Well, we know it's inevitable, the tokenization of everything. We know it's inevitable, the implementation of smart contracts and smart contract platforms and interoperability for large financial institutions. It's inevitable. And we know that a lot of those big companies have been working hand in hand with the bank coins and it's unstoppable at this point. So along with regulations, they have to know, hey, how's this going? What's going on with this? Which direction is it going? Who are you working with? Like things like that. What can you do for us? We know that also because they have they're like this with the BIS. They're 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 hand in hand. They're tied up very real deep. Who knows if they're going to be able to actualize on any of this that that they got they have to do. You got to make up your own mind on that, right? But just that's interesting there. It says that have come to talk about different regulations separation and different parts of what's happening. And, and then she says, so there's just so much, so much. Wait a minute. So you just said regulations. And then you said this vague part about in different parts of what's happening. Regulations are not that complicated. So when she gets, it's, it's not, if you've been following for a long time, you look at the verbiage, you've been reading these PDFs and transcripts and my humble opinion, this is my humble opinion. These regulations are not that complicated. I mean, as of right now, you take someone like the SEC is just regulating by enforcement. That's not that complicated. Then you look at their weak Howie test that they've been trying to apply, which really doesn't apply to crypto. Not complicated. Also, what's complicated here that makes her say, uh, uh, uh so there's, there's just so much. To, in my humble opinion, that's not alluding to regulations. It's alluding to whatever this different parts of what's happening. That's where the there's so much comes in. They're rushing. I won't say rushing. 
They're about to deploy smart contracts. They, they brought out Wisdom Tree this year. They brought out Franklin Templeton this year. That's where I believe she's talking about when she says there's just so much. She's trying to say a lot with saying a little. It's always that way with Stellar, isn't it? Nobody. It's like they just drop stuff on you. They don't really say it ahead of time. The the uh, MoneyGram thing got leaked by somebody. Who knows? Hey, whoever you are, leaker. <laughs> let me not say that. <laughs> I'm about to ask for some more leaks. <laughs> but boom, that's just out there. Franklin Templeton. Boom, that's just out there. Wisdom Tree. Boom. That's how Stellar does. They hold things back until they feel like it's time. And then boom, boom, boom. They just start hitting you with announcements, right? So now let's go here. This begins at two minutes and 16 seconds into this video. And it says this, it says, so I think there's two really big deals about blockchain and it's worth keeping these in mind as you make all these dis uh, design decisions, you know, customization of these different um, offerings on these chains. A lot of them are going to be customized. A lot of them are going to be private. Right. But let's keep going. It says for the kinds of systems that you want to build on blockchains, the first is that it's financial infrastructure. He's telling him, keep that in mind. This is financial infrastructure. Don't get confused and get off the pathway, but let's keep going. And why do they say that? Because if you stick close to what is built for, that's where the big money is going to come in. And these people want to be successful. Make no mistake about it. Nobody's here to be a failure. Nobody's here to make zero dollars. You know, so it says, uh, it says financial infrastructure with open self-serve access. And when you're already in the, the legacy system, or he says, he says the uh, financial industry is very easy. It's very easy to underestimate the value of something being completely self-served. Why do you say that? He made sure to drop that little tidbit in the first three minutes. Once again, he says it's very easy to underestimate the value of something being completely self-served. Because he knows where things are heading in the future. I just watched um, a video of a, of, a, of, a, of a lady who was very upset with a bank for how that bank treated her. And all in this comment section, right? When you do research on the banks, you're going to pull up some articles. There's going to be videos attached to those articles. And sometimes you give a click on the video. And it's actually very significant. In that comment section where this lady felt that she was uh, mistreated by this bank, a lot of people are in that comment section voicing displeasure with banks and talking about, I'll just say, alternatives to banks. If that's the way the future is headed, then you can easily see why this this individual is saying it's easy to, to underestimate the value of something being completely self-served, which is why I think the banks knew this was coming. This is why they're trying to congeal with the new financial system so badly. This is why Christine Lagarde herself said she was concerned about about the new financial system rendering central banks uh, irrelevant. Right. That came right from her mouth. That's in articles that are Post it out there. Anybody can read them. I've posted them on the channel before. OK. Um, and there was others. I can't remember the others who, who iterated the same. Oh, so now we're going to end off here with a little bit of silver news. OK, so this is from FXEmpire.com and it's titled 2024 Silver Market Forecast. Economic environment supports price rise to thirty four dollars. That would be real nice, wouldn't it? So let's scroll down here and, and see what they and uh, read what they have to say. It says silver prices spent much of 2023 consolidating in relatively narrow, narrow range. It is on track to close almost flat for the year. As of uh, as of late in the session Friday, December 29th, silver is trading at twenty three dollars and eighty two cents. That shows silver down by uh, nine cents or zero point four percent for the year. A high to low trade uh, trading range was established relatively early in 2023. By May, a low of $19.76 was reached and a high of $26.12. It says subsequent price action was contained within the established range for the remainder of 2023 as volatility tightened for the rest of the year. 
The low for the year was $19.76. It says on the upside, it was up as much as 9.2% at the year's high of $26.12 on May the 5th. So then it says here, my high target for silver in 2024 is $34 and 43 cents. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. This is that price level completes an ABCD pattern extended by the 161.8% Fibonacci, Fibonacci ratio. And it is close to the 61.8% retracement of the full downward uh, downtrend in silver that starts from the 2011 high of $49.78. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I forgot to say this in the beginning of the video, but if you haven't already, please smash that like button. I would greatly appreciate that. Let's me know to continue making these videos. Every time people click that like button, I'm going to work super hard to dig for information that's, that I feel is significant and bring it to you. All right. So please smash that like button. And also, if you enjoyed this content and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Tell everybody, <laughs> tell everybody that you see on New Year's <laughs> to subscribe to the channel. All right. We are on the path. We we are on the path to 100K subscribers. I know we can do it. We're going to keep on working hard. We're going to get there. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time. Let's get to the money.